destruction of natural ecosystems is one of the biggest threats to our planet. Whether through climate change, natural events, or human interference, we are losing vital habitats. Areas like forests or coral reefs not only harbor millions of species, but they provide valuable ecosystem services, benefits us humans gain from nature. Thankfully, people across the planet are working to restore them. In some instances, fire is as important to a forest as water and the sun. It can release valuable nutrients, clearing space for light, stimulating new growth. But in areas like the American Northwest, increasingly warmer and drier climates are changing how and if forests can recover. This fire here is the Williams Flats fire. So they had about 45,000 acres burn. Uh, and you can just see what the burn looks like after it goes through and how there's just nothing left. Normally you'd have uh, low severity fires go through and the tops of these crowns would have all kinds of cones ready to open up and drop seeds because these fires are so large and massive due to increased temperatures from climate change. There's just nothing left here. Grant Canary runs Drone Seed and hopes the tech startup from Seattle can make a difference. And the mission of our company is to make reforestation scalable for the purpose of making a dent in carbon emissions. Now, how do you do that? Utilizing drone swarms. Drone Seed surveys the land using 3D laser scanning technology known as LiDAR. This gives them a huge number of data points, which they use to build a detailed map of the area. We run software to then identify the obstacles off of that 3D terrain map. We actually get a point cloud of about 800,000 points per second. Most like LiDAR and self-driving cars is around 200,000 points per second, so it's incredibly dense. We're able to identify these microsites where seed vessels will grow really well. The software then plans out all of the missions for the aircraft. And so it's exactly what you expect if you were like planning out like how to mow your lawn. It's a lawnmower pattern that goes back and forth in different areas. The operator controls takeoff and landing. Once the drone is airborne, AI takes over to fly the predetermined route. We put about a thousand seed vessels per acre. Uh, each one of those has somewhere between four to six seeds in it. A human planter can do about two acres a day, maybe three drones. We're targeting 20 to 40, depending upon the terrain. According to Canary, it can take two years to grow trees in a nursery, which is time these forests just don't have. If these areas are left without having trees planted immediately after a fire, invasive species quickly move in, changing the landscape and making growth of trees much harder. The big risk is, is this going to transform and turn into steppe or savanna, and it's going to come back as 10 foot tall shrubs. As far as like mitigating the worst effects of climate change, there's really a handful of things you can do. The best one is planting trees because they are the most efficient thing you can do to sequester carbon. Just as forests are vital ecosystems on land, so are coral reefs in the ocean. They're home to a quarter of all marine life, despite making up less than 0.1% of the ocean. They protect land from storms and waves and provide valuable resources, such as the fish we eat. But reefs are in decline thanks to overfishing and climate change. Half of all reef systems have already been destroyed. Scientists predict that in the next 30 years, if we not do anything, more than 95% of the coral reef around the world will be in danger. On a small island 140 kilometers from Bangkok, a team of biologists are working on ways to restore coral reefs damaged by global warming. The ocean absorbs much of the heat trapped by greenhouse gases. Since 1993, the rate of ocean warming has more than doubled. The highest temperature that we got was 34 uh, centigrade, and that makes many corals 
in Thailand uh, breach and eventually die. When stressed by conditions such as temperature change, corals expel the symbiotic algae that gives them their distinctive colours, a process known as bleaching. The algae lives inside the coral for protection and in return uses photosynthesis to help feed the coral. If a coral is severely bleached, the chances of disease and death increase. The important thing that we have to make sure is that the baby coral that we produce, they have to be able to withstand to the changes of the environments. Professor Chawanich's work is centered on growing resilient coral. One way, she believes, is to improve the coral's genetics. Chawanich and her team have developed artificial fertilization techniques on a mass scale. During the spawning season between January and March, they collect eggs and sperm from several coral colonies and bring them up on land to fertilize in their hatchery. Here, the larvae are grown on concrete plates in tubs full of seawater. They're kept in the hatchery for two years, so they're strong enough, and then replanted by hand on the sea floor. The baby coral that we produce, uh, they have high diversity of genetics, and these can help them to survive in a changes environment. Funding issues mean the hatchery doesn't have reliable air conditioning, running water, or perfect lab conditions. But in a twist of fate, the crude facilities might just have helped the baby corals. So usually the temperature of the water in the hatchery is higher than normal, about two degrees uh, centigrade. Our hatchery is like a one-star hotel. Resting the coral in this one-star hotel actually make our baby, baby coral stronger and can withstand the real temperature when we release them back to the oceans. The team have grown about 10,000 corals so far Corals with this genetic diversity have a survival rate of at least 50%, while the natural survival rate is just 0.01%. But the success comes at a cost, $100 for each coral replanted. In recent years, mass coral bleaching events have happened all over the world. From Hawaii to Australia, the Gulf of Mexico, Madagascar and the Maldives. But projects like this in Thailand show there's hope for our delicate ecosystems. Start to see more fish, more animals like crab and trims are coming to the areas, using our corals as a habitat, as a home. So far in 2019, weather and climate events killed more than 4,000 people globally and caused around $42 billion in insured losses. Scientists widely agree it's only getting worse. Replenishing habitats like forests and reefs are vital in ensuring the health of our planet, reversing climate change and protecting us from its disastrous effects. <laughs>